Brett Pontecorvo here at MainStageToAbleton.com, and today we're going to check out how you can make a sampler instrument. Um, this is a great and fun thing to be able to do. Brett Pontecorvo here at MainStageToAbleton.com, and today I'm going to walk you through how to build a template that will allow you to quickly... Um, Brett Pontecorvo here at MainStageToAbleton.com, and today I'm going to walk you through how to build an Ableton Live template that will allow you to quickly sample synthesizers you've created for playback in Sampler. So to get started, we're going to set up some tracks. Our first MIDI track, we're going to rename Notes. Our second MIDI track, we're going to rename Controls. We're going to create another MIDI track that we're going to rename Instrument. And then we actually only need one of these audio tracks, so I'm going to delete it. And this guy we're going to rename Samples. Uh, now we need to set up some routing a bit here. So our Notes MIDI channel is going to send its MIDI to Instrument. Um, and our controls MIDI channel is going to send its MIDI um, to MIDI routing. Now, on your computer, this might say IAC bus, but whatever your internal MIDI routing is, is what you should use. Um, this is where we're going to drop our instrument in a second. And this is going to be receiving audio from instrument, which we'll be able to do in just a second here. So I'm going to go in and grab the uh, wavetable preset Funk Wah. This is a great preset that I really like. Um, if you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. Um, this is what it sounds like. Um, as you see, it's got sort of a glide thing going on here, but if you're running a ton of synths at the same time, um, it may be too resource heavy. Um, so you might want to sample it. Um, all right, so now that we've dropped that instrument in, let's go ahead and, in our samples category, take audio from instrument, and audio to, we can just turn off. Um, sends only will be just fine. Um, cool. All right, so let's create our note template. Um, now, I like to sample a couple of octaves, so we're going to start at C1, um, and if you just hit Command D, that'll duplicate it. We're going to move this guy up to E flat. We're going to move this guy up to F sharp, and then we'll have this guy set on A. So this is going to be our basic sampling pattern, and we're going to duplicate this across the length of the keyboard. So you can hit Command D and then Shift up arrow. And if these MIDI shortcuts are new to you, you can check out my blog all about MIDI shortcuts in the details below. And we'll do one more here. Uh, two more. Great. So now, when I fire this clip, uh, we're going to make sure that instrument is set to end. When I fire this clip, you will hear our funk wah. But as you can imagine, that is not going to be the easiest or best thing to sample. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to Command A, select all, um, and we're going to go into our notes category and we're going to multiply this. We're going to hit times two. We're going to do it a ton of times. Um, actually, we're going to do it until we see 47, and then we'll expand this loop. Nice. Um, so now when I fire this clip, It is very long, um, but that's not all we need to do. We also need to leave some space because remember, we're going to record these samples. Um, so we need to give the computer a little bit of time in between each note to start a new sample. Um, and the final thing that we need to do to our notes here is uh, select all of them and we're going to nudge them over. So if you hold down command and use your right arrow, 
you'll see they're starting to offset. Now the reason we're doing that is if these notes start directly on the beat and your recording of the samples start directly on the beat, there is a chance you could miss the attack of each note. And we want to keep the attack of this synthesizer. So we're going to make sure um, that we get to hear that by starting the recording a little bit before the note actually triggers. All right. So that is all done. We're set. We're going to put this track to rest for a second. Uh, now let's talk about the controls track. Um, in order for Ableton uh, to know when to switch, we need to set up some controls. Um, so I'm going to create two clips, and I'm going to rename this clip Down, and I'm going to rename this clip Record. So in our Down clip, let's pull up our envelope box. And let's scroll to the control 28. And we're going to draw an envelope that goes from 0 to 127. And in our record box, we're going to do the same, except we're going to do it on channel 29. So we'll go from 0 to 127. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually map um, these clips to certain parameters in live. So we'll start with our down button. We're going to fire that, and you'll see the MIDI routing is receiving it. We've got this um, little light here that's showing us that that's a thing. But now we need to tell it what to do. So if you hit Command-M, um, you'll see that there are some mappable parameters, and we're going to map to the down arrow. Now this accidentally got mapped, so we're going to delete that. We just want it to be to the scene down control. Um, and now we're going to exit MIDI mapping, stop that clip. Um, and we're in business for the down clip. When I fire this, um, it moves our selector down. All right, now this one we're going to map to the record button or the play button on the samples track. So we'll fire this clip. We'll hit Command M, and we're going to map it to here. Um, now we'll need to go back because, again, this sort of got accidentally mapped here. Delete. Command M. Great. So now as long as this track is record enabled, when I fire this button, it's going to start recording a clip. Um, so now we've told Ableton um, what these clips do. So we're going to take a duplicate of our notes clip and use it to control when these samples are recorded. So if you hold down Option, you can drag this over. And you want to select your envelope section. Now you'll notice that in the envelope section, um, all of these are blacked out. And that's because we actually are not dealing um, with our notes. We're dealing with our envelopes. So let's start with our uh, CC28, which tells us when uh, to move to the next um, to the next sample. Actually, even before we do that, um, we need to start our start marker at negative one because we want to give um, Ableton a full bar of time to start doing what it needs to do. All right, so now we're back in our controls and let's map a little bit. So after this clip fires, we want to go to the next scene. Now, because this isn't the record button, it's fine if we scroll to the next scene while it's still playing. So we'll select this, and I actually like to bring this just up to 64. Um, so now we're going to quickly duplicate this by selecting two bars and hitting Command-D. So now at the end of every single note, Ableton is going to uh, move to the next bar. So let's check out how that works. So our note's playing. Now towards the end of the note, we've scrolled down. Nice. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to tell Ableton to record. Um, now recording should happen after um, we've moved to the next clip, but before we get to the next note. So I'm going to start my record envelope in the middle of this. Uh, so we'll go here to 29. And we will select this area, and we'll do the same deal. We're going to move up to 64. Um, and actually, we'll need to do another one just before it so that we record that first clip as well. All right, and now we'll select two bars of time, Command-D for each of these.
cool. Now, um, we have 28 notes here, but we do not have 28 places to record them. So we'll want to go in here and insert our scenes. You can do that by hitting Command-I. Great. Now we can get rid of these because their purpose has been fulfilled. Um, and when I fire this, um, you will notice that it's going to start to record each note in an individual slot going down. Um, so I'm going to do it, and we're going to check it out. So you can see it's recording, and there's a little bit of space at the beginning of each of these clips so we catch the attack. Automatically moving through. All right, I'm going to let this run, and I'll meet you back in a second. All right, and so now we have successfully recorded all of our samples onto a different clip. So now we're ready to move this. All right, so now we've set up a way that we've successfully recorded our samples all onto a different audio clip. So I like to go in here and rename these based off what we've recorded so it's a little bit easier to find them when we move them into sampler. So I'm going to do 1C. 1 E flat. Now, uh, if you just hit your down arrow, it allows you um, to continue to rename. So those are my 1 C, 1 E flat, 1 G flat, 1 A. Now we'll do 2 C, 2 E flat, 2 G flat, 2 A. Um, and I'm going to finish up naming these and meet you back in a second. All right, so now that our samples are renamed, we're going to go in here and we're going to crop them, which will allow these clips to maintain their name when I drag them into Sampler. So let's grab a sampler instrument, and we'll select these samples, and we will drag and drop them where it says Drop Sample here. Now when I open up my zone, you'll see that all of my files are listed in the order that I created them in, which is pretty awesome. Now, over here, this is going to tell us how Ableton views these samples. So right now, this note, even though it is C1, uh, Ableton thinks that it is C3. And so it's going to play C1 when I play C3. Um, so I'm going to solo that so you can hear what that sounds like. Now, that's not the sound you'd expect to get. Um, when you hit C3. Not to mention that because we recorded the samples with a bit of a delay, there's a space um, before any sound is created. So we're going to deal with both of those issues now. Um, so what I like to do is I take my first sample um, and I make sure that I turn snap on. So we can actually select all of these and turn snap on. Um, but I like to move this so that um, it starts immediately when I press the key. All right, so that's a good location. So sample start 4320. So now that we know that, and all of these have been created using the same method, we can select all the way down. And in sample start, we can type 4320 and hit Enter. All right, so now when I scroll through, all of my samples are starting without any space. Nice. So now we need to do the same thing for our looping because we want these notes to be able to go on forever. So we'll select all, click this sustain mode, which will make it start at the beginning each time. And let's go ahead, I'm going to slow this track out and figure out where a good place to start our looper is. So I'm going to put it right about here and I'll put our end here. Now some general rules on looping. I like to loop the longest phrase possible. Um, and I like to leave some space at the beginning for crossfade so it doesn't sound so jarring when the sample starts over. All right. There we go. So our loop start, 66808. So let's go in here, select all of these clips, 66808. 
Now when I scroll through, you'll see my loop start has been changed. My loop end, 150337. Now when I scroll through, all of my loop ends have been changed. Um, and now our crossfade, 19447. And now when I scroll through, all of my crossfades are the same as well. Um, so we're almost there. The last thing that we have to do um, in terms of setting the sampler instrument up is get these root notes um, in the right place. Um, so I like to start at the bottom and work my way up. So select all, move all of these guys down, and if you go here to the root key, move all of the roots over too. Um, so with all of them selected, let's use our right arrow to shift these uh, chain selectors over to C1, which is our first note that we recorded. Um, now you'll notice the root is still down here, um, so we would get a transposed sound if we left it. Click the root key and using our up arrow, move the roots to match. Now we'll go through selecting all and we'll do to the right three times, one, two, three, and up three times, one, two, three. One, two, three over and one two three up one two three one two three so I'm gonna finish this up and I'll meet you back here in a second alright there you have it we are all set up um, so now if we go here and select all of them and right mouse click and we can distribute ranges around root key um, and we have an instrument Um, but we are missing some key characteristics of the sound, although we are very close, um, which is that we need to set up a way for a glide to be happening. So if we move to the pitch oscillator section, um, turn on our pitch envelope, we can choose glide, um, and we can mess with this time. Nice. Um, so that's, that feels nice. That's a good glide time. Um, and you can get super extreme with this if you uh, turn it all the way up. Um, but we'll leave it back. Nice. All right. Uh, glide. Next thing is I'd like to make a tiny bit more of the wah sound that I came to know and love. So we'll do that by uh, going in here to our filter. Um, and we're going to use our filter envelope uh, to control the filter opening. So we'll turn our amount all the way up. And let's start playing with our attack. Sometimes it's easier to hear this if you turn your resonance up. We'll bring, bring that down in a second. bring this resonance back down to uh, something a little bit less aggressive. Cool. All right. The final step in this process is saving it um, so that you can recall it later. So if you hit this button here, it's going to pull up your sampler presets and we can type funk wa sampled. Now anytime you want to use this, um, you can open it up and it will be there for you. You should also go ahead and save this live set so that the next time you have an instrument you want to sample, all you have to do is open up this live set and switch out um, your synthesizer and you can go ahead and hit fire and it will automatically start recording these samples for you one by one uh, the way we set it up at the beginning. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to Ableton, and especially if you're switching from main stage, head over to my website at mainstagetoableton.com forward slash go to get your free copy of the Fast Track Patch List Guide today, which will have you up and running uh, with a main stage style patch list in Ableton Live. And to stay up to date with all of our latest blog posts, be sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here.